Welcome back. Uh, as we continue the to define our large muscle groups on our anatomy, it is about time that we start correcting some of our volumes here by importing our image planes and making sure that we are following the silhouette. So to import your image planes, uh, I'm going to go ahead and open my docking port off to the left hand side by double clicking on those tiny little arrows left and right. Once you do that, you're going to come right up here to the draw drop down and you notice that little icon right below the word draw. If you hover over that so you get the four-way arrow icon, you're just going to click hold and drag that into your docking port here now. That's so that we don't have to keep fighting with our, um, our snapping. Uh, uh, on our drop down menus there. All right, uh, to load in your image planes, you're going to make sure that your floor is turned on. Now you can activate floor by toggling that on here in the menu, or you can go ahead and turn that on and off over here in the icons for your viewport. Once you do that, you can see then that you have the uh, ability to go ahead and click on your um, maps. You've got up, down, you've got front, back, and you've got left to right. If you click on map one, you can go ahead and load in your own image plane there. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that, and you'll get a pop-up window. Right down there at the bottom, you'll see import. Go ahead and click on that and you'll be able to navigate to your image planes. I'm using the same image planes that I used to create the base mesh in Maya. This is just to correct my silhouette and make sure that I'm not getting too far out of whack with my anatomy. Uh, so in this one, I'm going to go ahead and load my left image plane and because I'm in my left field there. Uh, and uh, if I rotate around, you can now see that I've got an image plane in my viewport, however very large, and that's okay. What I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, show you now also how to scale your model if this should happen to you. Um, all right, up, down, let's go ahead and load those in. Again, clicking on up, down, map one, import, and load your top view. This one is off by, um, by reason that I can show you how to correct that, which I will do now. I'm going to go ahead and tumble around to the front, uh, or excuse me, to the top view, locking into my orthographic view, again by holding shift key down and releasing my mouse button before I release my key. Now I can see uh, that I'm in my orthographic top-down view, and I'm just going to use my vertical slider to go ahead and make sure that that um, is centered and I'm looking at the middle fingers there for the most part. I'm going to center that right on the um, the grid line. Now I can go back and adjust that when I have scaled up my model um, but for now I'm going to go ahead and leave it. Front view, map, import, getting my front image plane um, right there, load that in. We'll go ahead and look at that as well. There it is. All right. Now, the reason I want to show you how to scale your model, if this should happen to you, is that it's so important not to move it off center, even by just a little tiny hair, uh, because your tools will then um, not behave appropriately with your sculpting. All right, so when you're scaling your model, of course, you're going to be on uh, that active subtool. You're going to come right up here, not down here, these control your cameras in your viewport, but right up here, these control your object. So I'm going to click on scale, and I'm also going to, uh, I have the old um, gizmo, which is just as useful as the new gizmo in your when you're scaling your model, <laughs> but uh, sometimes it, I don't have the icon for it, but your new gizmo and your newer rev of ZBrush is a little bit easier to use for this particular version. It's something that we're used to looking at in other um, programs. 
All right, if I click on my middle, um, let me go back and do that again so you can see what I'm doing here. These are multifaceted gizmos here. So if I click on, if I hover over and click on my center, I'm going to be stretching my model. I don't want to do that. I want to make sure that I am scaling proportionally. So I'm going to grab the furthest right, not the small one, but the center, or the large one, and going to the center there. And make sure that you are able to see your entire model because you want to scale this in one shot. Click and drag that. Keep an eye on the floor. Once your model's feet hit the floor, uh, that's at the point where you want to stop scaling. Uh, because remember we've sculpted a little bit on the head and it might not be as tall as it needs to be for the head. But you're also going to check the alignment of the wrists. So I could probably step that up just a little bit more. But be very, very careful not to move your bottle left and right or scale non-uniformly. When I get it scaled uh, proportionally in one view, I'm going to go ahead and lock into my side view. And rather than move your model, you're going to use the, you're going to move the image plane. Now you can move your model in the Z direction because it will not uh, take it uh, off kilter side to side. Um, once you, once you have the uh, problem of your model being moved, translated in the x-axis, again, your tools aren't going to work properly. Your z, your z direction isn't so much of a problem, but um, rather than that, since you've been sculpting on your model and everything is working properly for you, it's better to move your image plane. So I'll take you in both directions. To move your image plane, go to your side view and you can go ahead and move um, horizontally and just make sure that that's lining up with your character okay now the um, go ahead and set that back you can go ahead and click on the value there and just enter a zero. Uh, the other way to do that is, of course, to move your model. So when you move your model, if you don't have your gizmo um, set properly, go ahead and click on the blue icon there. And then using the same uh, portion of the gizmo, you're going to want to move your model forward. Whoops. That's transposing. Again, center one for the move. All right, center circle for this particular gizmo to go ahead and move that forward. Okay. All right, um, for the top down view, I'm going to go ahead and um, navigate there because we have an adjustment to make there too. We started to adjust it, but we just want to check it and make sure that it's correct. <clears throat> so um, it appears that I'm pretty spot on for this, but if you still are a little bit off when you're um, making sure that these are aligned, just use your sliders to pull that straight forward and back. Uh, rather than side to side on your top down view. All right, you're all aligned. You got your image planes in there now. We can go ahead and make sure that, um, whoop, I'm a little bit off here. So I'm going to go ahead and scale a little bit again in my, in my front view. I just want to make sure that my wrists and my feet, my feet are on the ground. And my wrists are, there we go. All right. Now we can go back to draw mode and we can continue to sculpt. You see my Z's additive is on. No other settings for my materials or my color are on at this point. So now I can go ahead and correct my proportions here. 
All right, you can go ahead and uh, tumble around to the other side and see your grid very easily. You can go ahead and look uh, then at your grid and your, your model at the same time. Do that for your back view as well. Um, and your top view if you want to go to your bottom so you can see that. I have a very large bicep as you can see. All right, let's get to the matter of shaping this model up and correcting any proportional problems. I'm going to go ahead and close my docking port and come right up here to my brush palette and I'm going to select my move tool. This is going to become one of your favorite tools. If you just click on the M key for move, uh, it, you notice that it'll filter your, um, your brushes for you. So then I can go ahead and collect the move brush a little bit easier. And for the move brush, if I'm using or moving large masses, I'm going to go large on the brush, I'm going to go uh, small on the focal shift, and I'm going to go light on the intensity. Okay, sometimes I want to go heavy if I need to move quite a bit. But um, that said, now I can get in here and easily you can see how easily move those muscle masses around. So um, just be careful. You're going to continue to tumble around your model so that you can see where it is that you need to, um, to correct, but you don't want to correct in one direction, have it look good, and not the other direction. You can see that I, my deep V is a little too low. In fact, he's got a low torso overall. So I'm going to go ahead and begin to correct that now. All right. Make sure you're um, navigating to the furthest part. Go ahead and tuck that back in. Give him a nice back. Take some of the fullness out of the chest. Where's that neck? Okay. I want a little bit more of a back on him than my image planes are showing. So working around the model, making sure that um, your volumes are accurate. And your image planes are only going to take you so far, so just make sure that you are um, referencing them when you need to and ignore them when you don't. I haven't done any legwork at this point, so I'm not even going to bother really pulling those out. I'll correct that as soon as I get some muscle mass on there. All right. Still a little heavy in the glutes, and I can get nice and um, I don't want to pull back my my um, bone structure here. It's just the mass in the in the middle of your abductors here, and I'm still a little full in the back. Pull that in, get a nice shape on the back. All right, I've got a lot here. Let's pull that in just a little bit. And yeah, I'm going to check out the head and face. Okay. Now, you will uh, probably, likely, run into some issues where your image planes just don't line up with each other at that point. Take some artistic license and look at the model to make sure that you're getting what you want. Okay, pull the nose structure back a little bit. I need more out here for the mouth. Lots. Now the area around the mouth might look really voluminous right now, but you're going to need that mass, so don't. Um, don't destroy it yet. I'm going to go ahead and line these ears up so that they are aligned with the landmarks. The eye line should be about the top of your trunk and the mouth, the bottom of your lobe, a little bit there. Okay, and then work down smaller and smaller on your brush size to make sure that you're getting what you want out of it. Now, don't be concerned, because as you can see, my model does not look very good yet either. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take some work to get it correct. And we've barely begun. So let's continue to work together. 
I'm going to spin this around to the back side so I can get the overall shape of the head. Feels like he's a little, there we go, a little wide, a little angular. So I'm just going to pull those in. And back around to the front, I'm going to just eyeball his um, jaw for the most part. I don't want it to be either really square. All right. That'll give me a good foundation to where I'm going here. And I like a bit, a bit more fullness back here. All right. So we've corrected him overall. Let's do back up, get away from work a little bit, and just check him out overall. And I'm more comfortable with this shape now. All right. I can see that he's got a lot of fullness on the back of the calf, too, that I don't normally go for, but we're going to keep our eye on our volumes as we go. And lift these feet just a little bit. Get them on the ground plane there, even though we're a little elevated for our image planes. All right, so that is uh, how we periodically check our work to the image planes, making sure that our uh, we're not uh, taking off in a direction that we don't want to go and making one area more full or less full than it should be using our guides and our references as we go. Now I'm also going to take this opportunity to do a little internal work because um, my critical artistic eye is telling me that there's a few things out of whack. I'm going to bring up my abs a little bit and my rib cage, a little bit larger there. Okay, and I'm going to move a little of my um, muscle structure off to the side, like I'm comfortable with it, and fill out my latissimus dorsi just a little bit more, and push our in with the ribs. A little push and pull battle going here and out with the there we go so we get a little bit more volume on the on that area now I tend I tend to overblow that you have to be careful and know where your artistic eye likes to take you um, I have it background in fashion illustration so I have a tendency of elongating limbs and making hands and feet too large so knowing that about myself I have to be very aware of that while I'm constructing something that is supposed to be realistic proportions <laughs> so you will if you haven't already uh, get to know your particular um, bends there be careful as you model realistically. You want to make sure to use accurate reference and not rely on your mind. Sometimes our minds can play funny tricks and get the proportions off kilter. All right, this one is far too full. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that one in. And I want more pull in this area. There's a bone under there. It needs to be pronounced. There we go. That's better. All right. Now that we have checked our work and brought into check our um, proportions, it's looking more accurate now. Now I can go forward and um, continue with the work on my legs. Uh, you can also uh, go to perspective view, which I highly um, do not recommend when you're first starting out, but this is how our eye is used to seeing things for the most part in three dimensions. So you can go there and correct any, you know, uh, issues that you see here too, but always go back to your orthographic views to actually work, um, and try to stick with your, um, side view, front view, and top view for the most part. 
Okay, all these muscles are going to start popping. In the next video, we'll tackle our legs, uh, the large muscle groups for the legs. Thank you for joining me for um, this corrective video and importing image planes.